Hi everyone, I'm Renee Yager, Director of Marketing at EPC, and welcome to our virtual trade show. I'm here today with CEO and co-founder Alex Lido, and in this segment, we're going to talk about 48 volt dis power distribution in mild hybrid and electric cars. Hi, Alex. Hey, Renee. So why are cars moving to a 48 volt ar architecture? So the need comes from all the new power hungry electronic uh, driven functions and features appearing on on these latest cars i mean things like electric start stop electric steering electric suspension electric turbocharging all sorts of fancy lighting in the cockpit variable speed air conditioning and that's just to name a few so uh, now with the emergence of autonomous vehicles there are additional demands from systems such as li lidar radar camera ultrasonic sensors and those very very power hungry processors that have to take all this information and make sure that, that the car steers in the right direction and all of that is is more burden placed on the power distribution system okay so how does gan uh, benefit those systems a mild hybrid car today requires between two and eight kilowatts of electricity to be available at any time. And a 14 volt, eight kilowatt distribution system requires wires to conduct 570 amperes of current. Now, at 48 volts, that number is reduced to 140 amperes which saves on the need for heavy and, and hard to manage wiring harnesses. You can imagine the manufacturing process dealing with a you know, copper wire that can handle 600 amperes mm -hmm. is very difficult to route around the curves and corners and things in the car. Uh, so you get, you get that down to 140 amperes, now it becomes a manageable harness. Um, so recognizing the value in, in moving to 48 volt systems, you know, all the tier one automotive customers are migrating to a 48 volt to 14 volt bi-directional DC power supply that accommodates these new electrical uh, requirements while maintaining compatibility with le legacy 14 volt systems. And the smallest, uh, smartest, lowest cost, most efficient solution today is with EGAN FET based buck boost converters such as the one shown here. Okay, so you say smaller, more efficient, lower cost. How does GAN enable a smaller solution? So GAN can switch fast efficiently, and therefore it's possible for the GAN-based solution to operate efficiently at 250 kilohertz per phase, as opposed to 125 kilohertz per phase for a traditional MOSFET solution. And as seen here for a three kilowatt system, this higher switching frequency results in the reduction from a five phase solution with MOSFETs to a four phase system with our EGAN FETs, and that reduces clearly size and weight. Uh, and the GAN-based solution is 35% smaller and results in 10 watts lower inductor um, losses. Just, just the inductors uh, uh, are 10 watts lower losses. So that's a very compelling benefit for a smaller solution, but uh, does the efficiency take a hit at all when you reduce the number of phases in the system? So on the contrary, um, you know, with even with one less phase and double the switching frequency, the EGAN FET solution is still more efficient than the five phase MOSFET solution. And we're showing a graph here that, that uh, shows efficiency on the vertical axis versus low power, load power on the horizontal axis. And the GAN FET solution is uh, seven tenths of, of a percent more efficient at full load, but that's 15% less power loss than the MOSFET solution. And at, at light loads, like 10% load, the GAN solution is five percentage points more efficient, but that's a 30% reduction in power loss. Um, and all this really translates into a full power, uh, at full power, uh, you, you save 21 watts continuously uh, of, of power. Okay, so you've got smaller, lighter, and more efficient. I'm gonna have to ask the hard question. Sounds a little bit too good to be true. What about the cost? Well, I'm glad you asked because the, the system cost is reduced. Uh, and it's really primarily due to the fact that you, with GAN, you can do the same job with only four phases versus the five phases required for the MOSFET solution. The GAN-based solution, we said before, is 35% smaller and 20% less efficient than its similar MOSFET-based solution. That's a $5 savings on this, on this uh, bill of materials. 
Okay, so now you do have smaller, more efficient, and lower costs. So when should we expect to see the first cars out on the road with the, these kinds of GAN-based systems in them? Well, we have designs going with uh, virtually all of the tier one uh, automotive electronic suppliers. And, uh, you know, I think the earliest should hit probably in 2022, maybe 2023. Oh, that's great. Thanks a lot, Alex. Thanks for your time today. All right. And thank you everyone for watching. If you would like some more information on EPC solutions for 48 volt automotive power, please visit our website at epc-co.com. Thanks again. Bye. Thank you.